In 1986, Claes Oldenburg and Koshi van Bruggen made a visit to the northeast of England, where a group of determined and forward-thinking people had been working on a programme to help revitalise the economically depressed region through commissions of art. With an international reputation as artists best known for creating sculpture of a noteworthy nature in various urban surroundings throughout Europe, Asia and the United States, Notably, Oldenburg and Van Bruggen had never produced public works intended for Britain. However, the allure of an 18th century explorer and the charm of a post-industrial town was to change this fact. The explorer was Captain James Cook and the town, Middlesbrough. This short film reflects on the outcome of that commission 20 years later by listening to a cross-section of the people it was intended for, some of whom were involved Others not even born. So, how did a message in a bottle become the bottle of notes? The, the bottle is hugely significant in that it's, it represents Cook in the, in the centre of Middlesbrough in the town. But for me, uh, it actually has a, a meaning which probably a lot of people don't make the link with. Uh, and that is that uh, the message around the bottle, taken from the first voyage, uh, refers to the transit of Venus. But it also has a link with the second voyage, uh, when Cook took two ships, and there was a, a, a need to communicate between the two ships. And one of the strange means of communication that they used between the two ships was a bottle. What they did, they predetermined rendezvous points uh, and at those rendezvous points, just in case they got separated, they actually agreed to leave messages in bottles. And we have an account from November 1773. He got separated from the other ship. He actually left a bottle in a hole under a tree. And we know that the captain of the other ship, Captain Furno, uh, actually went to the cove and found the message. Recently, since we've been talking about the exhibition and the celebration of the 20 years, I've thought more about it, and i perhaps reading too much into it, I don't know, but there is a really subtle link with, with Cook there and, and, and leaving messages in bottles. Um, I still don't particularly like it, uh, and I do feel that people would appreciate it more and its significance if there was more interpretation with it. My involvement with the uh, bottle of notes goes way back as visual arts officer. So I was determined in a way to uh, support the visual arts in the region. And particularly, I thought sculptors got a really poor deal and that I'd like to see much more art actually in the communities and, uh, and actually working outside the galleries. We wanted to actually do, or I wanted to make sure that there was a landmark. I wanted to facilitate a work that would actually change images and uh, change people's perception. I was also very aware of the work he was doing, you know, his, his famous sort of large-scale urban pieces. And I thought he was ideal, he was absolutely ideal, because not only could he work in that sort of medium, but also he had a sense of humour and was figurative and people would like, you know, undoubtedly like the, the work. So he seemed like a really good person to, um, to get. Um, I mean, I was fortunate to be one of the project officers and part of a, a very enthusiastic team who were you know, pursuing this vision of a major piece of sculpture for Middlesbrough. And I think, you know, what the bottle did really, it was perhaps the culmination at the time of a collection of public art. One of the beauties was that it provided something for everybody who lived in the town. But really the bottle was, you know, the highlight, you know, it publicized the town, it put it on the map. And before it became fashionable to have landmark sculptures, you know, Middlesbrough was perhaps ahead of the game, which was great for me as somebody who comes from Middlesbrough, uh, to put it on the international map. But really for a public organization, a local authority, um, at a time when, you know, uh, the financial situation was quite challenging and really what I did is um, help to provide that sort of coordinating role between working with the artist, um, working with the fabricators um, and I guess I provided uh, quite a lot of the fundraising effort um, because at the end of the day um, all the funding was provided externally at a time when lottery funding wasn't available so that in itself was a challenge. 
It's the role of the commissioner or the agent, uh, in a case like me, to uh, approach sufficient numbers of inventive and creative minds to come up with ideas that have previously not really been thought of and to then have the opportunity of selecting one or a number of those. In terms of Sculpture North as a production operation, it was in fact, getting on for three, four years, extraordinarily successful. Part of what we were trying to do at the time was to use sculpture as a means of generating projects to train in traditional and new skills. One can ask, well, why do sculpture, what value has art got to that? A very important aspect of that is each and every artwork is prototypical. It is its own thing, has its own problems, requires its own solutions. And a variety of public art coming through a situation like that offers considerably more variety of skill learning than, for example, building three or four canal boats. So that was the real value of it. I'm John Gill. I'm a shipwright player by trade, and I was asked to go into the training school because we weren't getting any good apprentices through. It was a pleasure working with the apprentices because you knew at the end of the day that they were going to take my place in the, in the shipyard. I was chosen to be project coordinator because of my shipbuilding background. We had to think a lot about how it was going to be constructed with the base first, then the outer perimeter of the bottle, then the cone piece at the top, then most of all the cork on the top. This had to be done in such a way that you could fit the inside lettering in the bottle before you put the lid on it. And some of those guys were absolutely spot on. There was two guys, one was a plater, I, I trained him to be a plater, and the other one was a, a damn good welder, but no one would take them on outside because there was no work. And um, they were responsible for all the work on the prototype bottle. There was a couple of other guys, but those two stood out. And that bottle, it means a lot to me, uh, because I'm, I'm very proud to say that part of Middlesbrough's history I was responsible for. I love the fact that we've got a bit of pop art in Middlesbrough, something that's really recognisable but still has levels of interpretation. For me the sculpture is very playful but it's very respectful of the area's heritage and history in, in the importance of Captain Cook. It's something that anyone can respond to and get enjoyment out of, whether it's playing on it, writing on it. I shouldn't really say that, but it has happened from time to time and it has been said that Oldenburg was cool with that because the bottle is all about leaving messages, writing, having something to say. The other really amazing thing is it's Oldenburg's only UK commission, which says an awful lot. And it came before, you know, really huge iconic landmarks like the Angel of the North, which again, for me, really set the scene for what could be possible with a, an artist of international acclaim. By chance, I just happened upon the opening ceremony. I just stepped off the coach coming back from London, where I'd been working, just walking around town, wasting a bit of time, and heard this voice coming over the air, Tanoi. Being nosy, I just walked around the car and I thought, what's going on? Turned the corner and there was a stage, maybe 100, 200 people looking at the stage with dignitaries on the stage. Didn't recognise them, but, you know, the way they were talking, it sounded like it must be important, so I wandered over. You know, at that point, realised it was the artist who had, had made the, the, the sculpture, and uh, I think a government official, and just hung around. The most vivid thing about it is that it was a uh, clear blue skies, boiling hot day. It was almost like you're in California in some sort of early 70s movie because the light was so good, especially with this tan eye voice going over. It's just again something that was a bit unusual for Middlesbrough. Well, it's fascinating, really, because Klaus. Uh, really established himself as an individual artist in the 1960s in New York. And if you look up anything on pop art, 
there is Klaus Oldenburg as one of the big giants of that movement. Um, and then along comes Kosher in the 1970s and they get together and they get married in the late 70s. And, it, and this is very unusual actually um, to get these two figures kind of melding into one creative force, um, which is quite fascinating because they were very, very different. Creating sculptures which can be called really kind of one individual vision. Klaus and Kosher received the invitation to do Bottle of Notes in Middlesbrough, um, partly because Klaus himself earlier on had had a chance to do something, believe it or not, right in the middle of London. Um, but of course it never got anywhere. Whereas in the 1990s, suddenly, uh, the Middlesbrough thing was a reality. We do in this country put up a lot of public sculpture one way or another, but unfortunately too much of it is very boring, very mediocre and very banal. So that's what's so wonderful about Middlesbrough, the fact that they did give a chance to one of our major modern artists. And they uh, rose to the challenge. And of course it is a challenge, because right in the middle of a city like Middlesbrough, what do you do? I mean, this is a big, big question, isn't it? And what do you do? You put this gigantic bottle, which looks as if it might have been swept in from the sea, and just kind of beached there in the middle of the city. I mean, this is a very provocative thing to do. Um, but boy, it works because everybody who sees it says, what's that? And then they go, wow. I was born in Middlesbrough. I go back to Middlesbrough a lot. I follow a Middlesbrough football team. Um, so I've observed it over a period of time. And I think that Klaus Oldenburg is such a significant artist and to have someone like Klaus Oldenburg uh, in this country making a public sculpture is amazing. To have it in Middlesbrough is fantastic. And so to me, it was such a major and important step and links Middlesbrough not just with uh, Newcastle and Gateshead, but with Philadelphia, with Seattle, you know, where Klaus Oldenburg made major, major, major pieces of sculpture. In my view, he's one of the great artists of, you know, the late 20th century, early 21st century, particularly in terms of public sculpture. For Oldenburg, art is about life in, in every manifestation, you know, whether it's a joke, whether it's serious, whether it's violent or whatever. And so I think to marry these things together into uh, the, the sculpture in Middlesbrough was a really incredibly creative and thoughtful act. For a brief period towards the end of the 90s, it became a focus of, of, of the football club uh, getting to all those cup finals. It was chosen as the, as the point where um, a lot of press came together. It was seen as being like something that could represent Middlesbrough. And I remember... Um, a journalist there from a national paper saying, saying to me, uh, wouldn't it be good if they, if they painted it red? I was thinking, you know, red, I don't know, I think that's the whole point of it isn't really, but wouldn't it be great if it was painted red? And I, and I sort of nodded and then I opened the paper the next day to see that. Uh, Robert Nichols, Flying at the Moon fanzine, says, we should paint the bottle of notes red but for Middlesbrough getting to Wembley. All right. And that started, it started at all sorts of people were asking me about painting it red. And, and, and obviously Klaus Oldenburg himself was, was questioned and was uh, up in arms about it. But it was good because it, it, it showed that the bottle of notes was, was, was a central, central point to, to, to Middlesbrough's greatest hour, getting to, getting to a cup final, when everybody was thinking about the town and everyone was thinking about the football club. The bottle of notes was right at the heart of that. What in the end happened was to put a, a red ribbon around it, which is probably a, a very good... Uh, but I don't know what Captain Cook would have thought. <laughs> To me, I used to um, work as a gallery assistant, so I used to spend quite a few days sat in the reception area or working in the shop, and I used to see a lot of people get married at the registry office, come out, especially on a Saturday on the weekend, and have their photos taken in front of the bottle and in front of the pond on the green. And I used to watch them and dream about what it would be, what would happen to me when I got married, where it would be. And now I met my husband at Mima at the same time, so 
I used to look at the bottle, dream about what it would be to get married, and then meet someone here and, and get married. I ran a project called Gallery TS1 for a number of years, young unemployed people. And I remember one day, halfway through one of those projects, one of the young people was in a little bit of bother, as, as a number of them often were, and I had to take him to the, the magistrate's court. And I remember looking and seeing, uh, pointing to the bottle of notes and showing him the Crown Court on one side and the magistrates on the other. And I said, you know, you're on a project now where you can make a decision whether, whether the arts can move you forward in a positive direction. And we referred to the bottle or whether you want to go in the magistrate's court or the Crown Court, because it's really more or less bang in the middle. And he, he just looked at me and kind of, he didn't say a lot, but he just nodded and went, well, yeah, I, that's something I can do positively in my life. So I think it, it has that stimulus and that influence on young people as well, which is really, really good. It's very definably tea size to me, not only down to what it was made of, what it represents, you know, and it's links with, with heritage and cook and everything. But it also, there's something about it that almost reflects the industrial sort of skyline of Teesside and it almost looks chimney-esque and it certainly it takes your eye upwards rather than through it and maybe that's a symbolic statement that an unintended statement that we should be looking upwards a little bit more but uh, yeah it's ours. For the past 20 years the bottle of notes has stood in the centre of Middlesbrough as a public and iconic symbol Long may it continue to offer hope and inspiration.